it's a process. It doesn't just all of a sudden. It's not obvious. In salvation, God saved us from a, a life that is just lived for ourselves. And according to the Bible, it's a life that's lived for Satan. But he just didn't save us from this life, from that kind of life. He saved us for a purpose. He saved us for a reason. And that reason has to do with you being a minister of some sort for other people's lives. He saved us for a purpose. He didn't save us so we could sit around, twiddle our thumbs, and not have any fun. That's for sure. He saved us for a purpose. Not just so we won't do this and this and this and this and that. <clears throat> Since we are God's masterpiece, we are created as he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the things He planned for us long ago before He ever came to this earth. He has designs for us. He has, he has a design for each one of us. And this mosaic put together is a beautiful picture. He has, he's got plans for us. Last week I had a hammer here, and the, this, uh, the old statement is, that, you know, be all you can be. You can do anything you want to be. You can do all anything you want to do if you put your mind to it. No, you can't do anything. That hammer can't do everything. It's designed for a purpose. Some of us are hammers. Some of us are screwdrivers. Some of us are wrenches. And some of us who are a screwdriver are trying to be a hammer and don't work. <laughs> some of us are a wrench and we're trying to be a hammer. I still remember the McDonald's. I was... I, Went to McDonald's one morning. It was a beautiful morning out. And this guy, he was going to put a new, a new uh, poster of some sort outside. And he needed a hammer. And he had this wrench. And I could tell this wrench was a hammer before because it was mangled. <laughs> the wrench couldn't be used anymore. And he went, it, he went out, he, he, he applied that thing, but that wrench is no good no more. That's a hammer now. But its design and its purpose was to be a wrench. And some of you, I, I was telling, you know, Keith said it last week, you know, you've been trying to be a hammer all his life where God made him to be a wrench. He's supposed to make adjustments on people instead of hammer on people. You know, he's... That's when I adjust. <laughs> One adjustment, man. <laughs> and there is a hammer in the body of Christ. It's called a prophet. The prophet has the word of God, and this is the way. It, this is the way it is. That's a prophetic gift, and the only way the prophetic gift is works when it's in the middle of love. The prophetic gift is great. It's like it's like a it's a surgeon that has a scalpel. The scalpel is great in the surgeon's hand because it's made to cut away certain things, but the scalpel is not good on the streets in a fight. And sometimes that's when we take out our scalpels and the truth and we slice at people. That's not what it's that's not, that's not, that's not. There is a prophetic gift. You're this is it. David said in Psalm 139, Lord, your eyes saw my unformed body. This is long ago before we were ever created. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God has a purpose and is designed for us every single day. We talked about this. As Andrew Womack said, as long as you can live without knowing God's will for your life, you will. Yeah, if you're content... And to me, that's one of the, the biggest issues on, on, some, on some, in some areas. We are content. We're just content to live whatever life we're living. And if we're content with that, we'll never change. If we're content, then what's the next step? What do you do? Follow through with the, with the consequences. Discipline. Just like, yeah, yeah. 
There has to be some, and that discipline involves what? Some sort of pressure. Diamonds out of dust. Okay. <laughs> God, it says in the Word. Those who God yeah. loves, Do not provoke your children to anger. He disciplines. And, and it says that no pain, I mean, that discipline is painful. And it's never pleasant going through the disciplinary process. But it produces a harvest. It says, consider and look at hardship as discipline. The hard things in your life, it's not your employer. It's not all these different things. It's not this person. It's not that person. Yeah, they could change. They could do this. But you know what? If we would look at all hardship as God trying to get our attention and to work something in our life, things are much better. What if we do that? That's what Hebrew says. Look at, endure hardship as discipline. That's right out of Hebrews chapter 12. You look at this. I am the captain of my ship and the master of my destiny. Is that true? Well, it's yes and no. It's yes and no. There's a measure of truth to that, that, that our decisions are going to determine your direction in life, correct? But not altogether. You cannot do everything. You cannot be who you want to be. You cannot be all you want to be. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. You cannot be all, the hammer can't be all it, it wants to be. Unless it wants to be what it's designed to do. You can't be anything you want to be. And I think there are some people, that's part of our frustration. We want to be what we want to be and we want God to bless what we want to be. Right. And that's not ever going to work, folks. You are not, you're not the captain. We have one captain. That's God. And if we choose to do His will, it's going to work. But if we choose to go our own way, life is going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough road. We looked at this. How many want to know God's will? It says right here, then you will be able to know the will of God. How many of you want to know the will of God? Then, it says. So when can a person know the will of God? When is the when is then? <clears throat> when can you start knowing the will of God? When is then? When you let God transform you inwardly. <laughs> when the transformation takes place inwardly, then you will be able to know. That's true. We cannot know God's will in our own hands. We have to, and, and the Paul says, if I'm out of my mind, it's for the sake of God. Say, it's tight. You've got to get out of your mind and into the mind of God. If you're in your own mind, because God's thoughts are not our thoughts, and His ways are not our ways, and the Word of God says, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are His ways above our ways, and His thoughts above our thoughts. We don't think like God. We can't fit our thoughts into God's thoughts. We have to have our thoughts transformed. So how does that happen? That's one step. The then can happen. Then you will be able to know, when can you, when can you start to know? Knowing God's will for your life is a continual process. That's for sure. It says, because of His great mercy... He says, I appeal to you according to God's mercy. We have to know that we don't deserve to know God. We, it, this is all grace that we're even around. We have to get the light bulb turned on that living our own life is a, is a, is a sad way to go. If we don't get that, 
then this, this, I don't know, we look at serving God as an option. Well, well, I'll think about it. That's not what it says here. Offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. As a living sacrifice. Do, do we, we got the revelation that we have to give up our whole lives to him on a continual basis? Because this is a process, folks. The more that you let go of your stuff, the more you get his stuff. The more you hang on to you, the less you get of him. Is that right? The more you hang on to your stuff and your thinking, the less we get of him. I just need more God in my life. I need more God in my life. Well, you can get more God in your life when you get more less of you in your life. There's just so much that can be shoved into this, this jar, man. If it's full of whatever, you can't get any more. You got to get this stuff out, right? That means the sacrifice, dedicated to serving Christ in Him. When we get up, it's like, okay, Lord, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? This is a process. This is true worship. So don't conform to the standards of the world. Then you will be able to know the will of God. So knowing God's will for your life is this, it's this process of us getting out of the way and Him getting in our lives. It's, it's, it's this process of not about what I want, but what about He wants. You must seriously and honestly want to please God. If that is, if that's where we're, seriously I want to, and honestly want to please God. Man, that, I mean, that, that's, that's, if we seriously and honestly, it, it's a heart issue first. Do we seriously and honestly want to please God? It means that your relationship with God is more important than anything else. Because if something is more important than your relationship with God, guess what wins? Right? Guess what direction we're going if something's more important than God? It talks about in the last days there will be those that are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. It doesn't say they don't love God, they just love pleasure more. It says the power of God is not in their lives. The relationship with God is more important than anything else. Keep let God into the command center of your life and submit to his values and ways. The command center. Conceptually, a command center is the source of leadership and guidance to ensure that service and order is maintained rather than an information center or a help desk. Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes we use God as an information center or a help desk. God, I need help. I want some ideas. I, what do I do about this? He's, he, uh, that's the help desk. Well, I don't like what the help desk says, so I'm going to do what I want to <laughs> do. That's not command center. That's letting God, letting God in the in the command center is that we He is the source of our leadership and guidance for our decision making. The, the command center's tasks are achieved by monitoring the environment and responding to events from the relatively harmless to major crisis using predefined procedures. Not making our decisions based on our will.